Hey, hey, y'all, it's James Q. Quick, and I want to take a few minutes to reflect back on 2020, one of the weirdest, I'm sure you can agree, years that we've ever had. Uh, but I want to look at what my goals were coming into 2020, how I did, show you some numbers, and then show you how much money I made off of courses and the things that I put out this year. So stick around for that near the end of the video. But all of that said, let's go ahead and dive in. First off, if you're new to the channel, my name is James Q. Quick, and I do weekly, sometimes two times a week, videos on web development related topics. So if you're interested in that, if you enjoy this video, like it, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so that you see more when they come out. Wow. So uh, 2020 has been a really interesting one. Um, I know, first off, like just want to address like 2020 has been an incredibly tough year for so many people in, in so many different ways. Um, it's really hard to to kind of put all the emotions and things that go into that in um, in anything that I can say. So uh, for what it's worth for everyone out there, uh, 2020 hopefully wasn't too bad for people that have, have really had some things go tough. Um, you know, hopefully next year will be better. Hopefully some of the things that we've struggled with will get better. And uh, here's to wishing that things in the world will just improve. So all of that said, uh, looking back on my 2020, again, interesting year, right? Like spending a lot of time at home. My wife and I, like on a personal note, really uh, started to like, we spent a lot of time together, but spent more time together and really appreciated it and enjoyed it. And that was a lot of fun. We went on walks with our dogs. We started playing golf. Uh, we're playing golf like once a week. We just uh, got back from her parents' house um, and we played uh, golf three times while we were there. Also went to the driving range, really enjoyed doing that. We started playing disc golf a lot. Um, and th I think some of it's just being more active and having a reason to get out of the house um, and just some time for us to kind of think about uh, the things that we enjoy and spending time in the things that we enjoy. So a little bit of a personal note there, like that was kind of special for my wife and I to really just spend more time together and really enjoy it. So on a, on a content perspective, I've mentioned this in a couple of previous videos, my wife this year had been going to uh, work a little bit earlier. She would leave the house at 630. And that gave me uh, about two hours. If I wanted it, I had two hours that I could use to work on content. And that was really, really a game changer for me and some of the numbers and things that I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, just having that time, having the dedicated time to be able to do that and not really feel like I'm sacrificing anything else in the world or in my life. So that's really cool. So let's kind of look at like, here are some of some of the things I'm looking over here at my monitor, some of the things that I had on my list uh, this year. I re-recorded my Learn VS Code course. So the Learn VS Code course on Udemy uh, has been re-recorded and I can't even tell you how many thousands of people have enrolled in that. And that's super cool. It's so amazing to have like my first paid product it's still my most successful by far on Udemy, which is really cool. Uh, I had a goal of creating uh, two courses, uh, one free course, uh, vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. I actually did that on the Scrimba platform. I did a um, a color lightener darkener tool on Scrimba. So I'll have a link to that below for you to check out. I also did another course on Scrimba, building a React movie search. So that was a really cool opportunity for me, for me to kind of knock out these like shorter hour long courses and and get it to a community of people that are really excited about on the scrimbo platform. So that was really cool. And then I also did uh, my paid um, paid uh, react and serverless course, uh, which had a lot in it, I moved to a new platform in Podia had a whole new setup, I also cross posted it to Udemy, I moved my newsletter to Podia really embraced the Podia platform, I pay for that monthly now. So really diving in and embracing Podia. Honestly, I didn't make as much money as I expected with that. I made about uh, 2,500 with that course and I really wanted to scale that up. So a lot of what my focus is this year is like kind of, I think making a little bit smaller of content so it's easier for me to get out and then working more on my, my branding and my marketing to get stuff out there for people in a way that they find interesting. I think it's hard for me to sell myself and my content sometimes. So that's one of the things I want to get better at is having good content and then wanting to get that in the hands of more people. Now, in addition to paid stuff, I created my first uh, ebook, which if you're interested in starting a YouTube channel, being on YouTube and doing uh, being YouTube as a developer or really any other thing, I did my YouTube for developers ebook uh, hosted in Podia, uh, wrote it in Markdown, exported to PDF, hosted in Podia and at YouTube for developers.com. I have a link to that below as well. Uh, you can go and check that out. And that was really cool. In two weeks, I created that ebook. And I can't remember how much I made, um, maybe close to a thousand thousand dollars on that, which is really nice. And I want to do uh, a couple more of those like smaller, maybe eBooks, maybe like an hour long video course or something uh, going forward this year as well. I had one note on here 
for consistency in blog posts. And I didn't do that to the point that I um, had wanted. So I had one per week and I wanted some of them to be pers personal, personal, personal and shorter ones uh, too. So I didn't do near that many. And, and writing blog posts is honestly kind of tough for me. I don't, I enjoy doing videos a lot more than I enjoy writing blog posts. So I still want to do more of those next year, but it's not, it's not a super, uh, super big priority for me. Had a goal of like speaking at 10 different events. I started my new job at, uh, at Aussie this year. So speaking at events, that being my full-time job as a developer advocate, that was a pretty easy one. I don't know how many different events that I've spoken at, uh, conferences, meetups, uh, things like that, maybe 15 or 20 probably. Uh, so that's really cool. I got the, the ability to get in front of more people, uh, which is really nice. So let's look at some of the numbers I had. A couple of different goals with uh, Twitter, YouTube, and email. And uh, on Twitter, my goal was to get to 10,000 followers on Twitter. And I really had no idea how I was going to make that happen. Um, and I got to 13. And that was really, a lot of it was being more consistent, having some other people kind of shout me out, pushing me over the hump for 10,000, and then kind of keeping up that momentum. So I went beyond that goal. And now my goal uh, next year will be bigger. I'll cover that in the next video. That So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And you'll see that in a few days. Uh, so 13,000 on Twitter, which is really cool. Just so cool to have that many more people who uh, are interested in the content that I put out. On another note, uh, YouTube, I got to, my goal was 20,000. I got to 27,000. And that is huge for me because I started with about uh, 6,000. So I gained 20,000 subscribers in YouTube this year. Uh, and that's just amazing. So exciting to have, again, so many people that are really care about the stuff that I put out. And next year, that goal will get even bigger. On the newsletter side, I uh, moved everything to Podia away from MailChimp. I played around with ConvertKit, moved to Podia, and I'm up to uh, something something over 2,000, so 2,200 or something people on that newsletter and want to continue to grow that out and share content, all that sort of stuff next year too. So in ter terms of numbers, like that stuff I did really well at, and I, I again, want to continue to grow it, want to continue to give good content to people, continue to provide value to people. And one of the ways that I did that was creating the Discord server for Learn, Build, Teach. And I've kind of watched older videos on my channel. You can go and find one. I say, hey, welcome. I'm James Q. Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. And Learn, Build, Teach is my LLC. It's also a philosophy for me. But now I want it to be a more community-driven thing. So I have this Learn, Build, Teach Discord server. Link below if you want to join. Uh, where the goal is to learn stuff, to help, uh, to build stuff, to help people build stuff, and to teach people how to build stuff. And it's a really great community. I'm really impressed with how that turned out. There's almost 700 people in the Discord server. Some are very active, uh, just posting stuff they're working on, asking questions. So my goal um, was really to just kind of build a safe space for people to come and be a part of. And I think that I and we have done that as a community, and that's been a lot of fun. And our uh, goal next year would be to continue to foster that and invest back in uh, the community, specifically in Discord, even more next year. And I'll tell you more about that in the next video if you want to subscribe and make sure that you see when that comes out. So I think one, a couple of other like pillars that I had last year was consistency in online content. I think I did well at that. I, I did live streams consistently actually starting uh, in February. That was really cool. My learning quick series, uh, been really consistent with that. Consistent with YouTube videos, one or two a week. More, Much more consistent on social media, still can do better at that. Uh, so consistency in online content, great. I did a good job at that. Genuinely investing back into the community, uh, course giveaways, emotional and technical support. I think I did that um, and I'm pretty happy with the things I did, doing giveaways, having the Discord server, but there's a lot more I want to do next year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, intentional networking and strategic partnership. Uh, being a part of the YouTube for Developers Discord server has been mind-blowingly powerful for me, seeing what other people do, meeting other YouTubers, asking them questions, having them ask me questions. We have a monthly chat where we just kind of a mastermind chat. And that's so cool. I think that that has been a huge relationship or multiple relationships that's worked out really well for me. Also did a couple of collaboration things, uh, courses on the Scrimble platform, a video on the free CodeCamp channel on VS Code, and then I've done a couple, three different videos on uh, the Traversy Media channel, which is huge because I've watched uh, Brad and his content for years. And that was like my de facto. I had to watch his video every week. So to have stuff on his platform uh, was really just a powerful one for me. And uh, yeah, I guess those are those are the three pillars. So I think that I did overall, I checked those boxes. I, I did some good numbers. Uh, if you're curious about uh, money, I... Um, I just pulled up my analytics for YouTube. Or actually, let's just do uh, YouTube analytics in general. Uh, in the past year, I got 1.5 million views. How crazy is that? That's super cool. 
uh, watch time is 74,000 hours. If you to qualify for, um, I don't even know what it's called, the partner in YouTube or whatever, you have to have 4,000 hours in the last year. I've got 74,000. That's super cool. 20,000 subscribers in 2020. And then I made $4,100 off of ads in 2020. That's pretty powerful. It's not a ton of money. It's not a game changer, but it is additional income that I get to invest in equipment and uh, paying people to do some design stuff to help me out creating content, which is really cool. And then if you're curious on the other side of this, um, my VS Code course on um, on Udemy has made about $19,000 over the course of a couple of years. That is mind blowing to me. Uh, Udemy does all the marketing and stuff. I just put the content out there for that course and it took care of the rest. Now, interesting note, I did also put my uh, React and Serverless course on Udemy as well. It didn't do near as well. It's only made maybe $100, honestly. So you kind of have to find the right thing. But if you do, uh, Udemy will take care of uh, the rest of the marketing stuff for you. So all in all, from a content perspective, from a community perspective, from a family perspective, and an emotional perspective, I've done really well. And again, like I understand this has been really tough for a lot of people. I'm just kind of reflecting on the positive points uh, in my life. Uh, I hope you enjoy the transparency. I hope you enjoy kind of seeing what uh, what my numbers look like, that sort of stuff. And uh, stick around with me for 2021. Like I said, uh, in, if you like the video, like it. Or if you enjoy the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel. And I will come out next week with my goals for 2021, my plan for content. You'll get to see all the stuff that I'm going to be working on and uh, and hopefully uh, be able to show even more support for the people that support me, the people in my communities and that sort of stuff. So 2021, uh, not a bad year in terms of those numbers and engagement. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you're looking forward to more content in 2021. I hope that you're excited for 2021 for uh, for yourself, for whatever you're working on. Anyways, all in all, I uh, hope you had a decent year in 2020. Look forward to an even better one in 2021, and I'll see you there.